Hello everyone and thank you for joining us this evening today. Today's Vespers is going to be led by the youth group and to start off let us sing praises led by the Butteline family. Happy Sabbath! Our first song is I Will Sing All the Mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks the eternal bright and fair. When the saints of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is full of yonder, I'll be there. When the road is higher ground. Glancing on the upward way, new heights I gain, in every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground, Lord, lift me up and I shall stand, Heaven's able land, a higher 
Let's bow our heads for prayer as Marcus Sang leads us in opening prayer. Hey everyone, uh, please bow your heads as I say a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that even though we must distance from each other temporarily, we can still find ways to worship you. I pray for all the people who are sick at this time and especially for those who are at the front lines getting our society through this pandemic. I also pray that we will use these online programs to keep learning about you in these difficult times. With all the things going on, I pray that you help us to focus on you above all other things. This I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Next up, we are going to be hearing special music from Kirsten Subade.
Good evening, everyone, and uh, happy Vesper. Happy Sabbath day to each and every one of you. Welcome to our uh, Vesper service. I would like to uh, thank our youth for leading us in our worship tonight. Uh, may God bless you all. Okay? Praise the Lord for our youth in the church. Because our youth leads us in our uh, Vesper tonight, I'd like to uh, give a message also about uh, youth, okay? <clears throat> so let's uh, have a word of prayer first before we proceed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another week that you have given to us. And now we stop because we stop from our work because this is the beginning of uh, Sabbath day. Yes, we rest on this day, literal rest, but we also rest in Jesus Christ because he is our Lord and Savior and our friend. Please, again, we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Turn your Bible. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 19. There's a story in this chapter that talks about the young men, right? So this young man, even though he's young man, but according to this passage in this uh, story, in this conversation between Jesus Christ and the young man, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So this young man is a rich young man. He's not just an ordinary young man, but he's a rich young man. Because according to this passage, uh, he had great possessions. Maybe the reason why he had great dispossessions, he had masters in business administration. Or he knows how to do business. Right? Because if... If this is the case, if this case is real and true, he had a great possessions, and I do believe that this is real because Jesus Christ said that, then this young man is not only good in business, but he is a talented and brainy young man. And not only that, he's not only talented, and good in business transaction, and a brainy young man, but he is also well known uh, during that time. So what I mean is, this is not just an ordinary young man, but the problem with this young man is this. He didn't have eternal life. He may have this knowledge and good resume and talented and well known but he failed in one thing and that is how to obtain eternal life so one day this man came up to Jesus Christ and said to Jesus Christ or asked Jesus Christ when you look at your Bible in verse 16 teacher what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Now, this young man is not only 
a talented young man, a good business man, and brainy man or well-known young man, but he is also, let's say, religious man or religious young man because he had this knowledge of religious thing. And because of that, once again, he failed on one thing, and that is eternal life. So because of that, he asked Jesus Christ, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? I also believe that this young man is an educated young man. Because he knows how to ask questions. Okay? Look at his statement. What good deed? He didn't ask, Do I need to have faith in you as the Messiah? But his focus is about good deeds. And because the focus of his question is about good deed, Jesus Christ responded in verse 17, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. Now, Jesus Christ answered this young man in that way because he knew that he had these great possessions. So the conversation goes on. Verse 18, he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, what you can see here, after, re, after Jesus Christ recites those commandments, uh, part of the Ten Commandments, right? The second, you know, section of the Ten Commandments. He summarized it by saying in verse 19, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is the good interpretation of Jesus Christ about the other half of the Ten Commandments. So we know that the other half okay, of the remaining commandments is what? Our love to God. Okay? Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And then this part is about loving your neighbor. So when we continue this, the young man said to him, all these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Now I want you to analyze this uh, statement of Jesus Christ here. This is the summary of the Ten Commandments. Why? Okay. Follow me. If we love God, then we will just follow Him. And that is the first part of the commandments. If we love our neighbor, okay, as ourselves, then Jesus Christ said, you know what, sell what you possess and give to the poor. That is loving your neighbor. Because for this young man, even though he's an educated man and good in business transaction and well-known and religious, but again, he failed on one thing and that is eternal life. He responded in this way, you know what, my master, all this I have kept. So his understanding of Religious thing is only like 
on the cover. He didn't have the deeper understanding of the words of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ responded, okay, that is only on the surface of the commandments. But because the law is spiritual, I want you to understand the spiritual side of the law. If you really love your neighbor as yourself, sell what you possess and give to the poor. Give to your neighbor. And you will be perfect. You will be mature in your understanding. You can do that because you have eternal life. You cannot do that because what you are doing and thinking in your life is you have to sustain your life in order for you to have life. But Jesus Christ said, those who are trying to save their life will not find life. <laughs> so Jesus Christ said, well, know what? Go and sell what you possess and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, what is the message of God for all of us, especially for our young people? Okay? You know, for our young people, we may brag about our resume, our credential. Oh, I studied here in this university in North America. While my parents just studied in the Philippines. You know, we may have good credentials. Or we may say, we are good in everything. We are... Having these things. But you have to remember. You have to remember. We may have all these things. But the question is. Like the question of the young man. What must I do to have eternal life? Are you sure you have eternal life? It is one thing to know and read the Bible, but it is also one thing to know personally your Savior. And if you want to be mature or perfect, then please help those people in need. You are fortunate because uh, you gained education in North America. You may have someday good income, okay? There would be no problem with financial side of your life because you were educated here. But remember, God is telling you tonight. Don't forget those people in need. If you want to be mature and perfect. Don't be like this young man. After hearing the message of Jesus Christ. According to verse 22. He went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. Why he had this uh, sorrow in his heart? Because he put his trust on earthly possessions, not on heavenly things. Verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. We all know the context, right? It doesn't say 
there will be no rich people will enter into the kingdom of God. Doesn't say that. There will be difficulty for a rich person. Who are, who are these rich person? Example, the rich young man. Because this young man, again, put his trust and hope on earthly possessions, not on eternal things. That's why only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. But there are rich people. They have the gift of giving and you know they help a lot of people because they understood the message of Jesus Christ here in Matthew 19. I know maybe uh, Two years from now, or let's say five years from now, you'll be professionals, okay? But don't forget eternal things. Don't be like this young man. He got everything, but he failed on one thing. That is eternal life. Have you noticed the conversation of these young men and Jesus Christ. First, what I notice here in chapter 19, verse 16, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? As if he was so serious to have eternal life. But when Jesus Christ explained the process, look at verse 22 again. We realized that he just asked questions. Maybe just to know the answer of Jesus Christ. But in reality, in his heart, in his heart, if he, if he is truly tr you know, true to himself to have eternal life, he will do what Jesus Christ told him. But he did not. He is not genuine. He is not a real seeker. So I hope that the message of Matthew 19 will help all of us, not only the young people, but all of us to understand, okay, to understand that in order for us to know Jesus Christ is to help those people who are in need. And then we can follow him. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, we thank you for this wonderful story. Thank you for this wonderful message of truth. And we are just like this rich young man. We fail to understand that we need to invest on eternal things, not only here on earth, not on worldly things. Heavenly Father, always to help us to focus our minds, our hearts to Jesus Christ our Lord so that we can follow him every day. Help us to uh, put aside ourselves to count ourselves as dead into sin so that we may serve him we pray for our service tomorrow. We pray for our brethren. We pray for our brothers and sisters. Be with us tonight, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.